Okay guys, you got problems with your fuel indicator on your KTM. Uh, it could be the 1190, 1090, 1290. Uh, could even apply to the Super Duke and uh, some of those, but let's just stick with the uh, 1090, 1190, and 1290 KTMs. And if you look at your fuel gauge here, now this can be a different type of fuel gauge on the newer ones, um, but you'll notice I have a one bar so this one's basically working correctly right now, but usually what'll happen, the first sign is that you'll see that you fill up the tank and it stays on full for a very long time. And then it will come down to maybe halfway. And then after halfway, you'll have it halfway until all of a sudden you're empty. Um, or if you see it shift more than one block at a time, so it's a block like you have one bar empty, then it's four bars empty, then you know, that type of thing. You know what I'm talking about. If you're having that kind of an issue. If you're having that kind of an issue, you're having a problem with the slide inside the inside the fuel gauge. Um, and I'm going to show you how to fix that today because it's actually quite simple. Uh, and then you can have a completely accurate fuel gauge and you'll get better results as far as understanding your fuel range. So if your fuel range is saying 210 miles, if this is showing full, it's going to say... 240 miles for pretty much ever until all of a sudden you're out of fuel which i've actually had happen on a uh, 1290 um ktm 1290 super adventure r um and uh it seemed like i was going to get it you know 4,000 miles per gallon <laughs> anyways let's go ahead and fix that i'll show you what tools you need and then uh and i'll show you how to get the proper parts of the fairing off and uh, we'll get right to it and we'll have a fixed uh, fuel gauge at the end. Guys, for this job, you're gonna need a couple of things. You're gonna need some sandpaper. Uh, I used a 150 and I used an 800 good sandpaper. Uh, just two things I had laying around. You just want one that's a little bit coarser than the other. I wouldn't suggest anything over uh, 150. And uh, so you'd use a, you could use a 120, um, something like that and then just a finer one just to smooth things out when you're done. Uh, you're also going to need a socket. This is a four millimeter socket with a wrench. You're going to need, did I say four millimeter? This is an eight millimeter socket and a wrench. I used an extension and then this is a Torx fitting and it is a T27 Torx. And then for your Allen, your Allen is going to be a four millimeter Allen. And uh, that's it. Those are all your tools. Let's get started. For a general description, let me just talk about disassembling the bike and how much you really need to disassemble. So you don't need to take the tank off. You don't need to take any of these upper part of the fairings off. Don't know, leave the handlebars on. Um, you're going to need to remove the seat. That's going to be number one. Take the seat off. And you know how to do that with your key. And then uh, this piece is going to need to come off, but there's some special things going on here. So there's some hidden bolts. Uh, so you've got a couple of bolts here. You have uh, these lower pieces on both sides are going to need to come off. And there's a bolt right back in here that you're going to need to take off. And there's a little clip. Uh, the peg kind of goes in. I'm going to pop this one out. There we go. And you can see that little peg right there. That um, <clears throat> will be pulling out. And this is going to slide out, slide out that way. But before you do that, you're going to remove this bolt. <clears throat> and then up inside here there's a hidden bolt back up in here and there's a bolt underneath the seat right here and you'll do the same on both sides this piece is going to end up popping up and sliding forward because right here in the front there's like a fork that gets stuck underneath part of the tank right there it's important when you're putting this back on that you're going to end up sliding it all the way forward as far as you can up in here and then you're going to yank back on it and you're just going to pop it down basically just slam it down and it pops right into place i'll show you that as we go forward i'll show you some of these bolts that uh and where they are so you can take a look at that be sure and look at this video that portion where i'm showing you a, a couple of the hidden bolts because some people will pry and pry and pry and they'll end up breaking the fairings so we don't want to do that okay all right guys so what we've done is we've taken these bolts off right here and that's uh one here two three yep yeah, three and then four and then up in front here, there's one bolt. With the lights, I have two bolts I had to take out there. You saw the little peg that's back here. 
Um, you don't have to take anything out there, but anyways, just to know that that's there. And the same on this side. So one here, two, three, four, of course that first one here. Now you'd be tempted to pull this up and try to take it out, but you can't. So what you want to do is come back over here and we're going to slide this piece forward and down and it'll come right out like that. You'll notice that there's a small uh, bracket there that goes to that bolt and that's what you're sliding off. Okay, the hidden bolt is right here on both sides. So if you try and keep prying on this, you're gonna end up breaking the plastic right here. So you need this little eight millimeter to come off on both sides. And so we'll remove this side as well. It's a little bit stickier because I've got this light on here, but just slide it forward and take it off there. And there's the other hidden bolt there. Take both those off the eight millimeter and we'll be able to pull the top part of the tank cover off. And with both these bolts removed, remember that little tab up there has got to come forward. If you push this up, slide it forward. It's going to slide it in and out right there. Up, and then it's got to come out of there. There we go. There is the little, I don't know what you want to call that, that tab right there. That's the tab that slides down underneath the tank right there. And when you put this back in, you're going to slide it up push it right down in there and then pull it back and then you just slam down the back of this thing it pops right in place all right now what do we need to do for the top of this this right here is where your fuel gauge is fuel gauge sensor so basically we just need to take this clip off right here that one right there and then we need to unbolt this and we're going to slide the whole thing out. We don't need to take this off and we'll just push it out of the way a little bit as we pull this up, okay? Next thing to do. Okay, guys, so I've taken the two bolts out here. And then what I need to do is I'm going to pull. There's a little clip right here. I'm pulling those, separating the two. There's an inner liner and an outer part of this bearing. I'm just separating so they'll move a little easier. And then if I can do this with one hand, let's see if I can pull that back a little bit. And then I'm just going to slide out. I can't do that with one hand. I'm trying to. Oh, there we go. One hand. Now see the cylinder coming up? That's where your gas gauge is in. And there's a float inside there. This goes all the way to the bottom. I guess I'll just... There we go. So that is your float. Well, not your float. That's the cylinder. And the float is inside there. Let me pull this out of here. And let's see if we can hear it. Can you hear that? That one moves pretty freely. What you'll find is you put it all the way down there at the bottom and you're going to turn it over and it doesn't fall down. If you've got that problem, that's your main issue. I don't think I can get this one to stick. But uh, I've had a problem with almost every one of these. I want it to be a little bit more accurate and this one seems to hang up a little bit. So I let the bike sit for a while and it was kind of hung up. So I'm going to show you how to fix this really quick. So that's the cylinder. Most years, if you're doing this, it's probably stuck completely. Just shake it a little bit and you'll hear it slide down. <clears throat> the bottom of this thing needs to come off. You see a little plastic piece? And you see little tabs all the way around here that are bent in. And those are bent in on the plastic piece to hold this pl little plastic piece in place. And that's all it does. And so we're going to need to just pry that off. And then we're going to bend those little tabs out. And then when we put it back together, we'll bend those tabs back in. All right, let's get started. All right, so now that we've got this tube out and you want to get this plastic piece off, I set this plastic piece on one corner here on the bench. I used my screwdriver and I just pushed down a little bit and it popped right out. That's the plastic piece. And if you look down here at the bottom, you're going to see a little electrode basically sticking out at the bottom and that goes into that little slot right there okay and that's where that's gonna let me pull down on this a little bit so that's your float and if you look inside here and i'm sure you can see it you're gonna see that little electrode that goes from the bottom of this all the way to the top and uh it's just basically i say call it an electrode but it's a um it's a bunch of uh contact points that this slides down and this has a metal piece on it as well 
as it slides down each one of those contact points that represents part of the gauge on your gauge cluster and that's how it measures the uh, fuel i'm not sure you can see through there and i don't have a flashlight to really show you but you'll look in there and you'll see it and uh this is the float that's gonna when you put it back together it goes back on that you can let that slide in there and then you'll see that that little piece right there there's a little slot in it that needs to go back on that stick that's hanging down and then you're going to slide it back in and you're going to push these little indentations back down on this plastic i'm going to kind of bend those out a little bit and then we'll do that again but here's how we're going to do the fix all right so for most people what's happening is the outside diameter of this float is too big and it gets stuck inside here and basically all you need to do is sand that down just a little bit to get off any edges and to bring the diameter of this down just just a little bit so it slides in and out of here very very easily now because i have a tool i could actually use um, my belt sander and sand this down really quick i wouldn't suggest doing that you may take off too much material so what i'm doing is i just took a strip off you could just use a strip of sandpaper and uh and then kind of wrap it around about halfway i'm doing it like that and i'm just basically going to twist this inside here and take some of the edges off and sand it down a tiny bit another way you could do that is you could just sit here and go like this and just keep rotating it what will happen is if you do this too much you're going to get little flat spots you really don't want the flat spots so if you can and you can wrap it about halfway around and just start twisting it don't damage the the uh metal piece in here uh, if you can see through there you will see you see that little basket in there you'll see that there's two sides so one it looks like it's angled in this direction this is a side that has little tabs on top of it i'm sorry this is the side that has tabs on top of it with the metal piece on the outside and then this side doesn't have any metal pieces it has little tabs on the outsides this goes down this goes up and you can actually tell pretty easily because that metal thing, ha the that little stick has to slide through. And it'll slide through this way. But if you look that way, if you try to slide it through this way, you're going to bend all those tabs. So it's got to go through that way when you slide it back up in there. We'll go over that one more time right before I uh, finish this up. But I'm going to go ahead and sand this down a little bit. And uh, and we'll get, get to putting it back together. All right, so that's the finished product right there. And I used a 150 grit sandpaper and then uh, you could work your way down. I wanted to have a pretty fine uh, grit at the end. So about an 800 grit at the end. Um, and let's take a look and see how that slides up and down that ride really smoothly. So again, the metal part, if you can see that, it's gonna go up, this is up. So it's gonna go in that way. And you can confirm that by looking at inside this piece and you'll see little tabs in there. Little tabs are pointed to the bottom. And so that makes this the bottom and that the top with the metal. And then you'll see the, tab, the stick inside here. You wanna line it up with the stick and slide it in. And just see how well it sticks in there. So is it, does it stop at the top? does not another thing it could make this stop at the top so if you don't have this centered exactly right what will happen let me just hold it off to the side it doesn't go all the way down it may not even move so that has to be centered that's the next piece when we put this plastic piece back in there make sure it is centered a hundred percent and if this little stick needs to be in that little hole we'll do that next okay so this is the plastic piece i've got the um, little bobber in there right the float that's in there I mean, you see a little stick here now <coughs> excuse me <laughs> so you can see the little hole there and you're gonna be able to see that stick going through that so let me line it up here hopefully you can see what i'm doing Move that here down a little bit so then you can see that i'm gonna line those two up and i've got to get the stick inside that little slot and then i confirm that it's in there by looking down here and I can see that the little stick is in there. I want to line it up. And now before I push this all the way in, I'm going to test it. Does that slide really well? It does. 
so I haven't twisted this. If you twist this, it's not going to work. Okay, so these to be all lined up right in that little slot right there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put these, if you've taken the little tabs out by bending them a little bit out, then what you're going to need to do is tap them back in and you just use a little screwdriver or a uh, punch and tap in at the same four spots that was before and then that'll put pressure on this plastic piece so it doesn't come sliding out all right so i've got an assembled piece here and i'm just going to talk about a couple of things if you pulled these little things out the little tabs out then you'd punch them back in um in the same place that it was before or if you left them in you can hold on to this put this piece here and tap it with a hammer uh, you don't have to tap it hard just to tap it a little bit to put it back in place that will work too um and then you don't put this end on the bench and hit it you'll crack this and you'll be buying a whole new float okay so that's that and then test it and make sure that, that float slides freely and doesn't ever hang up okay i'm gonna go really slowly mine works very well um, much better than it did before even all right what are the next steps we want to look at so you've got this o-ring right here i don't know if you can see that is in good shape so we're going to inspect our o-ring and if you want you can put a little tiny bit of uh oil or something on top of that o-ring to make sure it's lubed up uh, you can use a little tiny bit of vaseline something like that or just a tiny bit of oil if you want to uh, make sure the surface is clean over here i'm going to show you what that looks like and then these bolts don't have to be super super tight you just want to bring them down until they stop um, if you tighten them too much you've got uh, a plastic tank of course and there's a plastic part you could end up breaking it okay so we're going to reassemble this now and uh all right i was talking about these two little bolts in here and these two bolts right here are going to go in and i'm turning them here until you feel it oops <laughs> i gotta try and do this one-handed here uh and so i'm gonna put that one in and this one in. so it goes in evenly um, you want that o-ring to sit in place pretty well you don't want it to get crooked so you want this to kind of go be tightened down very evenly down into in its place now i'm going down and it just feels like it stops right there i'm not giving it much pressure it stops right there okay and then all i'm going to do because it's an o-ring you don't really need to crank it down see this is like not quite a quarter turn it's probably an eighth turn here i can only do a little bit on that one and that's it okay that's all it needs to be in place um, that's not super tight you don't need to crank down on these bolts it just won't leak not with that uh and in place okay this oh that gets plugged back in uh, fuel level is uh, reconnected and you can go ahead and start it up or not start it up but i'm just going to go ahead and turn the key on and we're going to see here that i have a correct fuel indicator sometimes that takes a moment to calculate but mine did it immediately is working properly and so i can turn this back off and reassemble the bike that is it i hope you guys found this useful if you did uh go ahead and like that uh, hit that like button down there make a little comment um if you know an easier way to do this then that's great um if you've completely messed it up and broke this thing or lost parts then you'd have to buy a new one but uh ktm's recommended way to fix this is to buy a new one uh and you may end up with the same problem again if if you do buy a new one before you take that part home take it out of the box and turn it upside down and try to make sure it seats all the way at the top so that's why i turn it upside down and then slowly turn it back if it doesn't slide back down really easily you're just going to end up with the same problem um, so make sure you test the part before you bring it home that and uh, before you pay for it <clears throat> otherwise this is a quick and easy fix i would say uh it's a half hour job you know just to you know for the sanding down the pieces and uh it takes about 10 minutes to take the variants off um, actually i've timed myself five minutes to take the variants off five minutes to put them back on and then uh, it takes a good 15 20 minutes just to uh, mess with that part just to um, to get it right and then put it back in so you're looking at about a 30 minute job i'd say i guess that's what my point is about 30 minute job cheers so i did tell you guys i would show you how to put this piece back on you can see i kind of cleaned up my bike a little bit <laughs> i just can't leave it dirty uh but um so this piece going back in 
is pretty simple but uh, it always messes people up so um, let me just show you what I'm doing so I'm taking this piece saying on top of here it's got to go right down in here pretty far so it's gonna be let's see I need to line up my pieces here um, and that one's lined up that one's lined up all right Turn the handlebar straight. I don't know if I can do this one-handed. I did. Okay, I slid it down in there. And then I'm pulling back so I know that that is that tab is underneath the tank. You see how it's pulled here? So I pull it back from this part. I'm sorry, I'm pulling back from right here. And it's underneath there. And then all I need to do is tap it down. And then that pot, this whole thing should be right in place. So it's just hitting it. And that lines up all these things. If you don't do that, you just pull it back out here and you try to pull it and just kind of push it in place. See how it's separated a little bit? It's almost impossible now to get it in place. So pull it back and hit it. <laughs> and now all these things are all lined up. You can pull back a little bit if you want to just to make sure everything's all lined up. And that is it. The important one back here, making sure that, that gets lined up with the hole. Um, and uh, that's it, then we're gonna put the side pieces on and all of that.